Jackass cast member Ryan Dunn has died. Police say Dunn and a passenger in his 2007 Porsche died early Monday. West Goshen Township Police said the passenger still hasn't been identified. Officials said the vehicle went off the road. It was found in the woods fully engulfed in flames. Authorities say speed may have been a factor in the wreck in suburban Philadelphia. <laughs> I've never lost anybody that I care about. <laughs> it's my best friend. <laughs> Certainly an emotional time. Best friend and co-star Bam Margera opens up and breaks down after the death of Ryan Dunn. It's good to have you with us tonight. I'm Thomas Drayden. The daredevil and MTV star who was killed in a crash in Chester County, certainly fresh in the minds of family and friends. The coroner's report is out and says Dunn and his passenger, Zachary Hartwell, died from the impact and resulting fire of the crash in West Goshen Township early yesterday morning. Police have done an accident reconstruction and say Dunn's Porsche might have been traveling as fast as 130 miles per hour, 130 when it jumped a guardrail, flew into a ravine, and burst into flames. Toxicology results won't be back for four to six weeks. Now Dunn posted this picture on Twitter hours before his death. Jackass star Ryan Dunn was drunk Monday morning when he died in a fiery car crash. West Goshen Township Police said Wednesday his blood alcohol content was more than twice the legal limit for Pennsylvania. Dunn's body tested at point one. <laughs> I've never lost anybody that I care about. <laughs> it's my best friend. <laughs> I was in Arizona when I heard and I just remember we're, I was with some friends having the best time ever and at 12.30 I just started punching out the windows of the rental van and ripping out the speakers and I don't even know why I wasn't mad at anything or anybody and, and if it's 1230 there that means that it was exactly when he crashed. <laughs> he was the happiest person ever. <laughs> the smartest guy. He has so much talent <laughs> and he had so many things going for him. <laughs> it's not right. It's not right. <laughs> How do you get through this? A lot of people have been worried about you. I can't. I can't. <laughs> do you know how horrible it is being on an airplane for six hours, not being with everybody? <laughs> You're just stuck on an airplane. No one had any idea, probably. It was the worst phone call I've ever got in my life, waking up to that. <sighs> Alright, y'all. What's going on? It's Black Balloon. And I'm coming back with another video, so y'all already know what's going on. Alright, look, I'm going to come in maybe, maybe twice in this video. To um, just talk about a few things, I wanted to come in right here just to specifically talk about how. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, this was a request. This video of Ryan Dunn was a request. I do apologize for not remembering the name of the account that requested it to me. But um, shout out to you. I told you I get this video done. And um, and yeah, we're here. So um, I just wanted to come in on this part. Because a lot of y'all, I'm sure y'all already know where I'm going with it. Because I put it in text about Bam Margera basically faking those tears and faking that emotion that he did. Um, talking to that, whoever that news anchor guy was, right? Um, and, and it seemed a little set up as well. Like, because you, you wonder sometimes, even though that interview could have been recently after he died. But you wonder sometimes, like, why do they take interviews with, like, local news stations to you know, kind of like show their grief on what they're going through as far as someone that they know that just passed, you know, so it just seemed kind of odd that they were right there, like kind of like randomly on the side of the road doing that little, you know, little interview or whatever for Bam to basically tell how he felt about um, Ryan Dunn dying. And, you know, you don't have to be like, 
you know, a professional person at telling off body language or being able to tell that someone is lying or faking an emotion, you can just see it. Why? Because we're humans and we can sense real emotion. We can sense the truth. We can feel it. We, we know what that feels like because it exudes out of a person. And it's like it's like when you're you're just in a, you know, funky ass mood all day. You know, you're just not having a good day. You can't fake being happy because someone's going to see that you're like, oh, you forcing this smile. You forcing being happy right now. You really not vibing with my jokes. None of that. You know what I'm saying? You can't force that. You can't fake it. It's the same way when you're trying to force tears and force emotions, you know, that you're like grieving over someone's death. It's the same way. You're going to see it. You're going to see someone faking that. You know, you can tell because it's just not genuine. Why? Because it takes energy to fake emotions. It takes energy. And if you're not like a trained actor that knows how you basically know how to place that energy so you can seem like you're really emotional. If you don't know how to do it, if you don't, you know, basically, if you're not like a trained actor, you're not, you're not, you, you're going to be able to, somebody's going to be able to tell that you're faking. You, you, you're not crying right there. He didn't even have any tears coming out of his eyes. So to me, clearly, that was a bunch of crock. That was a bunch of bullshit. He definitely was not crying. He was not emotional at all. And right there, that shows you the sinister side. And what actually goes on, because he know that Ryan Dunn was sacrificed and he probably was the man behind it. Right now, there's 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 a lot of um, there's a lot of numerology around this death. There's a lot that connects to skull and bones, which is going to be the next segment of this video that we're going to get into the numbers, um, death by numbers and the connection to the secret society of skull and bones. So I'm going to show y'all a clip or two and then I'm going to come right back and we're going to talk a little bit more about some numbers. Check this out. What really happens behind the padlock doors of this windowless building? The tomb of skull and bones, Yale's oldest secret society. Its members include some of America's most powerful and privileged elite, all sworn to secrecy. Skull and Bone's only purpose is to get its members into positions of prominence around the world so that they can elevate other members to similar positions. That's it. Alexandra Robbins broke through the wall of silence to write Secrets of the Tomb based on clandestine interviews with dozens of bonesmen. Only 15 Yaleys get picked each year. The society includes at least three U.S. presidents, Supreme Court justices, and too many senators and CEOs to name. In 2004, Bush versus Kerry was the first all-bonesman presidential election. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> and it's that secrecy that has allowed conspiracy theories to run wild on campus. It's great for the freshmen when they come in and they see it across from old campus and nobody really knows what goes on there. There are people who think that they run the world and it's just a giant conspiracy. If you haven't made a million dollars by the time you hit 35 or something, they give you a million dollars. What I imagine is just like a dark room with a lot of people sitting around it in hooded capes. No Bonesman has ever publicly revealed the truth, but it's believed the 15 juniors are selected each spring based on a mix of family connections and their accomplishments. Initiation is actually pretty silly. Members dress in costumes, skeleton costumes, devil costumes, other costumes. Somebody's dressed up as Elihu Yale. The initiates have to do things like uh, drink fake blood out of a skull. And share their deepest, darkest secrets. One of the first activities they participate in is called connubial bliss, or the sexual history. During CB, as it's called, each member must spend an evening standing in front of the other 14 bonesmen and recount his or her entire sexual and romantic history. Also, are you a member of, were you a member of Skull and Bones from college and Bush? Were you in the same secret society as Bush? Were you in Skull and Bones? Thank you for cutting my mic. Thank you. Are you gonna tase me, bro? Don't tase me! I can't do it!
You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for... Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. No, I'm not going to lose. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News, and it is my sad duty to report this afternoon that my friend and colleague, Tim Russert, the moderator of Meet the Press and NBC's Washington bureau chief, collapsed and died early this afternoon while at work at the NBC News Bureau in Washington. Tim had just returned from a family trip to Italy with his wife, Maureen Orth, the writer, and his son, Luke. Alright y'all, so this is the second time I'm coming back in the video, and um, by now at this point, you might be wondering why is this video even about um, Skull and Bones, and what kind of relation does it have to um, Bam Margera and, you know, the sacrifice of Ryan Dunn. It's crazy saying Bam Margera too, because Bam is actually my nickname, that's been my nickname since I was like three years old, you know what I'm saying, like, they used to call me Bam Bam, it's crazy, but anyway, I just gave y'all a little info about me, but anyways, um, so, so by now, you might be wondering why you were looking at that skull and bone stuff, and my bad, I kind of, like, probably should have told you what the relation was to skull and bones and 322, but as you can see right here on the screen, this is where we get the relation to skull and bones because as it reads and i just i just found this um i found this picture just randomly on the internet um basically it was about the day that ryan dunn died so it reads the one car accident happened on route 322 around 3 a.m now we don't even have to read any further into this little article but i am because y'all already know what i'm about to say according to officer geiger with west goshen police if whatever 2007 porsche 911 gt3 shot through about 40 yards of trees before it hit the last one and exploded into flames all right so just like i just said off of reading the first sentence you get why we have you know we have relation to the skull and bones society and the number 322 because he had the accident on route 322 Skull and Bones, their occult number is 322. 3 plus 2 equals 5 plus another 2 equals 7. 777 seven, seven from Aleister Crawley. So we kind of get an idea. That's just another example of why they use 322. Two. But there are more examples from where that number originates from. Then it also happened at 3 a.m. We know 3 a.m. to be the witching hour. We know 3 a.m. is damn near when all of these sacrifices happen. We already know that. I don't, I don't have to explain that to y'all. Y'all already know 3, 2 to 4 a.m. is the devil's hour. Y'all already know that because it's the complete opposite of God. Remember, they like to mock him. So that's why they do things in between that two to four o'clock hour in the middle of the night, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning. The veil is really thin between the spiritual and physical world. So y'all already know they like to carry out these ritual sacrifices at that time. We've seen it, you know, countless amount of times, you know, through many videos that I've done where celebrities have died in car crashes or however they died and it was around the 3 to 3.30 hour in the middle of the night, top of the morning, 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m. We've gotten that many, many times. 
And it definitely is, you know, it's not a coincidence that he died in a Porsche, you know, I guess seemingly the same way that Paul Walker died. And um, I guess that that is kind of, you know, that's really one of the biggest connections to Ryan Dunn being a sacrifice. Because if you think about the Paul Walker situation, he died in a Porsche. His was red. I don't know what the color of Ryan Dunn's. But what makes it eerily similar is the fact that Paul Walker actually played in the movie Skulls. Well, he played in the movie that was basically about Skull and Bones. He was an initiate. Y'all remember the movie. Y'all have seen it. If you haven't, please go look at it. You know, if you haven't seen it in a while, just go watch it and you can kind of like refresh your memory on the whole Skull and Bones thing. Because it's, it's damn near what what they really actually go through. Because remember, in this video, in the clip that I showed y'all, the lady was talking about how they have to basically, you know, um, talk about their whole, you know, sexual history and stuff like that in front of the other bones, man, blah, blah, blah. Just basically things that are kind of like, you know, they, they kind of make you very uncomfortable. You know, things that are very outside of what you would normally do, like sharing those kind of private experiences with people, you know, um, which is that that's all ritualistic. But Paul Walker actually played in that movie. Remember the symbolism? He they gave him a red portion that movie. Remember, that was one of his like initiated gifts was the red Porsche. And then our imitating life. Fast forward, he dies in a car crash in a red Porsche. That Porsche exploded, burnt up. Same thing as Ryan Dunn. That Porsche, you know, supposedly exploded, burnt up. He died on Route 322. That's the skull and bones number. That gives us the connection to the sacrifice and to the occult. And it gives us in the same manner that Paul Walker died. And they're both connected back to skull and bones. Now, I'm not saying that these two, they were like, they could have been. Who knows? You know, obviously, I don't think Ryan Dunn nor Paul Walker went to Yale, but who knows? We don't know the you know, the true reason why it links and Skull and Bones has their numbers tied into the sacrifice that I don't think we will ever truly know why they are, you know, why they're behind it, why this secret society comes up in this sacrifice, but it doesn't come up in another sacrifice. Like, why is the number three, two, two ringing in these sacrifices? You know, like, why does it relate back to Skull and Bones? That's the that's another question, you know. Um, so I definitely, I thought it was, you know, very just eerily similar as far as how they both died and the connections that they both had to Skull and Bones. Not to mention that the Jackass logo is basically the same logo as Skull and Bones. And I think I showed y'all that picture early in the video. Now that's not a coincidence. So, you know, Maybe somewhere along down the line behind the production of Jackass and them being who they became and Bam Margera or them just making a sacrifice. Maybe, you know, there was a Bonesman somewhere in the mix. And that's why, you know, we get these, you know, um, occult relations to the sacrifice. Maybe that's why we get the symbolism in the numbers. But that's the only things that we can speculate about. You know, so um, I definitely I thought this was a good video. I thought it was a good one to do. Um, definitely shout out to the person that requested me to do this video. Because um, I definitely didn't have it in my plans, but um, this was one I should have done a long time ago. Hope you all enjoyed that video. We'll pretty much wrap it up right here. Um, if I missed anything, of course, let me know in the comments. And y'all already know what's going on, man. With that being said, I hope y'all have a good weekend. It's Black Balloon, and I'm going to see y'all soon.